Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to present the notion of structural directive. We are going to understand what is that type of directive, how does it work and we are going to understand its syntax. So the very common star ng if and star ng for syntax. We are going to implement a structural directive as part of our model. Let's start implementing now the functionality for opening and closing the model in response to different events. This could be the clicking of a button or a menu item, or this could be hitting the escape key if the model is open, or clicking elsewhere on the page outside the model. We will be providing an auxiliary structural directive to support those very common use cases. But notice that if we have a more advanced use case that is not covered by those auxiliary directives, we could simply use here ngif and open and close the model depending on some complex condition, like for example certain elements of the page are enabled, disabled. So for more advanced use cases we don't need the directive that we are about to build to open and close the model. We could already use the component independently of that simply by using ngif. But it would be really convenient to be able to add here a structural directive that we are about to create that would work like this. So we would start by adding here the star meaning that is a structural directive and we would call it simply AU model open on click. So this could be added to any element of the page that while clicking it triggers the opening of this model. So this could be linked here to this button for example. So we would pass in as input here of this new directive a reference to a button or if there are multiple elements of the page that if clicked would trigger the opening of the model we would be able to pass into this directive an array. So an array of buttons, an array of menu items that if they are enabled allow the model to be opened. So this is the overall idea of what we are about to build. This is the public API of this new structural directive, which is a type of directive that we have never built before. So let's see how this type of directives work. We are going to start by quickly creating the initial version of the directive. In order to do so, let's go here to the command line and let's do ngg directive. So we are about to generate a directive. We are going to put it in the au-model folder and we are going to call it au-model open on click. If we open here the directive, we can see that the correct selector was used. So this directive will be applied to any element of the page that has an attribute with this same name. Now that we have generated our directive, it's important to make sure that it's configured at the level of the module of our component. So not only here at the level of the declarations, but also here at the level of the exports. Otherwise, this would not work. Now with this in place, let's take a moment to go over how this type of structural directives work. So another example of this type of directives is for example ngif that we are very familiar to or ng4 and in general any of the directives that starts with a star. So we are going to go over what this star syntax exactly means. Let's take here an expression. Let's start with ngif so that we are sure that we have here a compiling program. And let's just say that we are using here ngif set to true. So as expected, this will ensure that the dialog is still displayed. Now let's take a moment to notice that this syntax is very different than for example this syntax right here for passing in a property to a component. And it's the same syntax for passing in a property to a directive. So what happens here is that Angular is desugaring this ng if star syntax to something else. What happens is that Angular processes this syntax here in multiple steps. So first, whenever finding this uh, syntax, Angular is going to implicitly create a ng template. And inside that ng template, Angular is going to put inside it the element to which the directive ng if in this case was being applied. And then on top of the template itself, Angular is going to apply the directive in this equivalent syntax here and it's going to pass in the same expression that we have here. So in this case, true, it could be any expression. So this is what happens. This syntax here at the level of the 
Angular model star ngif gets implicitly converted to this other version right here. So in order to confirm that that is indeed the case, let's quickly start here our development server. And with the server up and running, let's hide this version that was using star ngif and leave only this new version. We are going to refresh here the application once it's compiled successfully. And let's have a look. So as we can see, this is still working. If we now switch ngif to false and hit control S, we're going to see that the model is hidden. So this shows that the two syntaxes are equivalent. But it also raises a question of how is this working? Because as we know, the ng template uh, tag will not be rendered to the screen. So if we remove here the ng if and we hit control S, we are going to see that the model is not rendered to the screen. So this is the normal behavior of the ng template tag. So this means that this type of directive, a structural directive like ngif, needs to take a reference to the template and then using that template it needs to instantiate it, it needs to apply the template in this section of the page according to some input property that gets passed to it. So in the case of ngif, it will take the template and it will render the template to the screen depending on the truthiness of this expression that gets passed here. So as we can see, this is the only way that this type of directives could work. They really need to take the template and instantiate it and they need a place on the page to apply the template. So it has to be this node here. So in summary, let's build a directive just like ngif. That's what we're going to do in the next lesson.